Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Adam. We must bring it dawn. Off camera, I traveled back to the drunken lair. Now that we have a higher... Oh, where is it at? Higher speechcraft, I'm going to try and talk to the two individuals that had the speechcraft checks we couldn't pass. Afterwards, I might go back and try the... One moment, i got to fix my headset. After that, I might go back to the circus and try that rat fight again. Um, but yeah, let's start with this guy. I'm in around 35. I think we, yeah, I think we already read that. Man, I sit you indifferently. It looks away. Uh, what can you tell me about yourself? What's there to tell? My name is Sir Yoga. I work with the men. We brew moonshine. Sometimes we taste test it too. All right, we've read that already. Uh, how'd you end up here, Sir Yoga? Petrovich invited me here. Before that, I swept streets, and this alternative promised much more advantages. So I didn't think to, I didn't have to think twice about this offer. You notice that after these words, the man's face is gloomy, and his look grows distant. Then he equally quickly recollects himself and throws another potato in a bucket. I can feel that it's not. I can feel that it's not all there is to it. Tell me the whole story, old man. The man looks up at you frowningly and folds his arms across his chest. Then he lowers his eyes tiredly, waves his hand in dismissal and sighs. Oh, all right, I'll tell you. After the war, I worked at the electro station in Krasno. In Krasno, I was a. Incred. Okay. I was a promising worker and was expected to become a department boss. I was planning to marry a young woman. Everything was good, but the trouble, darn it, always sneaks up on you unexpectedly. One moment. One night, I was walking down the street and noticed a dude dragging a woman. She was fighting and screaming. Without much consideration, I approached him and told him, and told him to let her go. The response was, of course, just cursing and bad breath of an alcoholic. It set me mad, and I kicked the crap out of that moron. I broke his nose, too. After that, someone called the police, and I was arrested. Later, it turned out that the beaten pig was some sort of a big shot in town. In court, I was accused of causing grievous bodily harm. The girl that I had protected had been intimidated. She was a witness, and not only didn't say a word in my support, she accused me of everything. As a result, I got five years in a penal colony. Five years gone to the dogs. And I'm told I was lucky. His hand immediately clenches into a fist, but then it equally quickly relaxes. When I got out, my ex-girlfriend had already got married. My flat had been confiscated by the Chamber of Commerce. At the power station, they didn't want to hire an ex-convict, even as a regular worker, nor did employers at other places. All that was left for me to do was sweep the streets for a mere pittance. The rest you already know. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, but you were a true hero. Right. Only instead of laurels, this hero got a dump barrack. A constantly stinking roommate in a miner's cough. Alright, well I got some experience for it. 85, that's pretty good. Then this guy, let's quick save before I do it. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, because you can keep trying. Alright, frowning Sachi man of pre-retirement age, we already know that. Uh, what's your beef, man? Ah, it's just my personal issues, don't worry about it. Tell me, maybe I can help. The man sighs and begins talking slowly, as if the words suddenly became unbearably heavy. When the war was over, my daughter and I were survivors, my Dunya. We came across a village that was being rebuilt, called Pushkinsky, and we settled down there. I can work as a mechanic. I would repair cars and farm machinery the best way I could. When my daughter grew up, she started doing housework and gardening. She was very good at it. We even had a surplus of food we grew, so she would take various cucumbers and tomatoes to the market and exchange them for other goods. Yeah, I'm just going to listen without interrupting. The man licks his dry lips and sighs heavily. One day, bandits came across our village. I'm not sure what happened, but I guess they started extorting money from our chairman. Where could our village get the money from? We would either use it as potluck or exchange it. Then the bandits found out there was a car mechanic there. They, they made me take a look at the car and mend it where necessary. While I was laboring under the hood, one of them saw my daughter and suddenly became so courteous. Well, I thought, my dunya managed to melt even the heart of a bandit. The gang decided it was too late and dangerous to go back to the wasteland at night, so they stayed in the village. And in the morning, I couldn't find my daughter. That bandit took her away. He probably offered to give her a ride to the market. I ran to the market, but nobody there saw my dunya. The man sighs sadly and sleeks his greasy hair with the outspread palm of his hand. So I've been looking for them a long, for a long time. I found their camp, well what was left of it. But the bandits themselves weren't around anymore. I followed their trace. I saw so many horrible things in the wasteland. I went through a lot. I found a factory not far from here that the bandits had occupied, but I couldn't get inside, no matter how much I've tried. The guardsmen at the gate only told me they had no woman there, no women there. But where else would I look for her? The gangs of the wasteland are uncountable. 
So the grief made me start drinking. I came across this hut and sort of made myself useful here. So that's my story. That's my beef, as you put it. The man becomes silent and lowers his eyes. Maybe he went deep in his thoughts, or maybe he has nothing left to say. Well, I have unexpected news for you. I met your daughter. Right. No sooner have I mentioned her than you met her. Cut the crap. I'm serious. She lives at the factory. Describe Dunya to him. At first, the man is listening with you distrust, and then with animated surprise, and finally, with feverish excitement. When you're done, he throws his hands in the air and almost screams. Exactly, exactly. You just described Dunya to me. But how? Oh, I can't believe it. How is she? What happened to her? Alright, uh, well, she's safe and sound. She's missing you, as it turned out. She and that bandit really fell in love with each other, and now they've lived together. The man looks at you, bewildered. Fell in love? This can't be true. That's not how I raised her. You're making it up. Tell me now what really happened. Chill. The bandit turned out to be a decent fellow. And your Dunyan eloped with them because you never approved of them being together. The man stops his foot angrily as if you're... Stops his foot angrily, as if getting ready to start arguing, but instead he only waves his hand dismissively. Well, if she really fell in love with him, and if he's really not that bad, I wouldn't argue with it. I'd be all for it. Why, why run away like that? About a proper goodbye or even leaving a note? Like disappearing off the face of the earth. He sadly purses his lips and starts rubbing his eyes that have gone red. In the tone of the man's voice, you begin her to hear unusual notes of complaint. At least she could have come see her old man. I'm not allowed to go visit them at the factory. Well, now she knows where you are, she might come see you. By the way, what are you going to give me for this news? You're right. It gives me hope. Listen, I'm not a rich man, but this is all I have. One moment. The man takes a sack off his back, and after rummaging in it, he procures 30 rubles in crumpled, greasy notes. Two tin cans and a plastic bag with crumply crackers. Or crum crumbly crackers. Uh, dry like the Karakum Desert. Here you are. This will definitely come in handy to a traveler. And now I need some time to think. Maybe I'll try to find this village. Maybe she'll come herself. Okay, so I need to go tell her about that. So we'll head back to the factory, and then after that, we'll head back to the circus, even though it's a little out of the way. Also, off camera, when I was traveling to the Drunken Lair, I ran across two random encounters, I think. And one of them had a cave, and inside the cave I found two stimulants. The, uh, the really good healing items. Did my game crash? Okay. Whew. That was weird. Yeah, let's head up to the factory, tell her about that, then we can always head back down to the circus to try and deal with those rats. Because now I do more damage. I think I can kill a rat in like three hits instead of the usual four to five. So I might have better luck in fighting the rats. Yeah, let's meet the person. Hey, stalker. See a nervous strider in a protective face mask. He lifts his pants up and whispers. Okay, well let's uh They have to have less than four intellect. Well, that's lame. That's some interesting loot, nothing really worth buying. Also in business? Uh, what's your name? Sanya Satag. What's your job? I'm a wool seller. I'm in of calm with this job. Something like that. Where are you heading? I'm walking to Ochanoya, you get it? Okay. Hi, bud. Well, how you doing? Hmm? You get him, Fidel. Show him what's what. Good job, Fidel. Now we get all of his stuff. Um, how's that compare to this? Oh, it's more stealth. Okay. I'm not gonna kill everybody I come across, but uh, interesting. All right, yeah, I'll take it. I'm pretty happy with that outcome. All together but I think I'd rather I still rather the speechcraft equipped for the most part and 50 experience points well hot dog
Do the Carabiniers have anything for us? Same map layout that we've run across several times. Let's go check out the uh, dumpsters in the back. What did I just get? Was it a book or was it just like waste paper? Yeah, it's just waste paper. Okay. Let's go see if they have anything worth buying. Probably not, as is usually the case. Okay, so they're heading to Ultra Noye this time. So if I wanted to ride there, I could for 50 rubles. Oh! It's pretty pricey, but it's a. Uh... Oh, super stimulant, 40 to 55 health. Okay. Afro Phenom. Interesting. Okay. Well. How many rubles do I have? Where are they at? So I can sell them some stuff in exchange for this helmet. I think it's going to come in handy if I could find my rubles. I'm really bad at locating my rubles in my inventory. There they are. Alright, we'll I have plenty for it. So let's do this. Well, hold on. Let's, let's do an exchange the right and proper way. Actually, I think I need that. I'm going to craft some bolts. Hold on. Close that. Oh, I'm missing a log. Son of a gun. Okay, well, then I won't be selling that. And give this. Oh, he already has a bag, doesn't he? Keep the sharpening stone, it might come in handy. Uh, have that, that waste paper you can have, scrap metal, here you can take that corn, I'll keep one of those, uh, you know this rabbit's paw. Did I sell him the, uh... Yeah, I did. I don't know... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Plus eight tinkering, minus one health. Eh, I'm probably not going to use that. I'll really tinker. So, not too worried about it. Alright, now where's that helmet at? Give me that, and I will give you the rubles that I owe, if I can find them. Alright, cool. Now I have a helmet, I can equip it before combat. Or in combat. And it gives me two damage threshold. So they should just do two less damage to me whenever they hit me. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but the rats sometimes hit me for only one or two damage. So, they'd be doing zero damage to me in that case. If it works like Fallout does. The original Fallouts. It was my favorite thing in the original Fallouts. If you got like metal armor, and uh, you ran across ghouls, feral ghouls, they couldn't do damage to you at all. Because, you know, you're wearing metal armor. What is this guy? He looks new. Where are you? You see a sturdy thug sporting makeshift armor and a provocative occultish tattoo on his forehead. Uh, in his teeth, he clenches a smoking cigarette. A huge camping backpack rests on his back. When he moves, tinkling can be heard, as if he's gathered every piece of metal in the neighborhood. He talks to you first, slightly speaking through his nose. Ooh, 7 to 13. That looks so... Yeah, give me that. And, um... I 
I'll trade you some stuff for it. What do I, what do I got? Uh, I don't have a gun in my inventory. I'm going to keep that. I guess I don't need to keep irradiated food. I'll keep the meat. I can cook the meat, I think. So I'll hold on to that. Yeah, fishing didn't really pay off for me when I did it last. I'm probably never going to gamble, so I don't really need that. Oh man, I almost, I almost made it. I need four more. Okay, uh, what do we got? Sorry, I know this is, a uh, super exciting to watch. Um... Awesome. All right. Uh, hee hee. Hello, my brother and devil. Admiring my armor? Or, admiring my armor, aren't we? I totally understand. I'm proud of it. Made it myself. The man beats himself in the chest. His makeshift armor emits a muffled, brassy sound. Yeah, good armor. So you say you made it yourself? Personally, with these very hands. Okay, okay. The design of the armor was not mine, but I assembled it, and that's what counts. Hey, can you tell me exactly how you assembled it? The man looks at you suspiciously, but then shrugs and gestures for you to come closer. I should probably ask you to pay me for this, but I'm too lazy. What does it matter anyway? Or any yay. You should do good for its own sake, not for sappy gratitude, so. He tells you what resources you'll need. How to bend the steel sheets, how to sew leather patches together with a makeshift bone needle, how to tie up seams, and eventually how to make it all work out. How to make it all work. So I'll tell you everything. Now you can try to craft your own armor too. But remember, you owe me. As you wish. Let's talk about something else. The tattoo on your forehead is impressive. The man curls his lip and slides his long fingers across his forehead. Yeah, this is because I heh, worship demons. You get it, bro? This is no picnic. It's a serious matter. Uh, how did it happen to you? That's a good question. What, you interested? Of course you are. Demons are generous masters, if you've found the right approach. The man grimly... The grin... The grin. The man grins complacently and rearranges the straps of his backpack, which is filled to the brim. So this is what happened. I once set up a camp at the shore of a big lake to the north of from here. I set up the camp and set traps at the perimeter and went to sleep. But as soon as I fell asleep, crazy things started. Alright, continue listening in silence. So I was asleep and I dreamt I was asleep. I was seeing myself as if from the outside, that, that is to say. Well, it happens. Crazy things happen in dreams. This was okay. The fun began when I looked at the sky. The morning star was shining up there. People call it Hesperus. It was so bright, burning my eyes out. So it was a star and at the same time not a star. It was a cute broad, all plump and hot. Wow. And then and there were a rabbit and a dove on both sides of her. There were poppies and roses and some green bushes with blackish bluish berries at her feet. The mouth opened so wide in my sleep that my jaws crunched. I blinked and there were no there was no woman anymore. Instead there was a real kaleidoscope. A horned demon with a with diamond eyes gave way to a fiery dragon, which in turn was replaced by a giant whale and then a ball of light. The man grins, inhales the smoke of his cigarette, and breathes out clouds of smoke almost black Sorry, breathes out clouds of almost black smoke right in your face. You start coughing. Curious dreams you have. Are you sure it's simple tobacco you smoke? Nothing but tobacco. This is my advice to you. Other crap just messes with your brain, and I value my brain very much. The man clicks his tongue, disgruntled, and lets out another puff of thick black smoke in your direction. Uh, don't put me off track. We've come to the crucial moment. I heard a voice in my head, sounding like a thousand voices in one. I am Lucifer, the Morning Star. That's not how you spell Lucifer, but or maybe it's Lucifer. Lucifer. Anyway, the very f very sound made me shudder, but not in a bad way, you know, like when you're hungover, but as if the space in all its entirety was trying to enter me. All right, continue. So while I was squiggling. Great Lucifer told me that in the end, at the end of the world had that had come after the war was just the tip of the iceberg. That great cataclysms still misspelled await our planet that will raise everything. Uh, it won't happen. It won't happen soon, and it won't happen at once. But sooner than you think. He told me many wise things, many things, so many that when I woke up, I forgot almost all of them. But I remembered that I had had this knowledge once. 
But even the few things I did remember, are I perceived the universe as it were, a single point of infinite nothingness, yet of infinite extension. I became this universe, I became dissolved, or something like that. All thanks to that d uh, demonic epiphany. Huh, what a story. Think what you want. I told you what happened, or at least how I understand it. There's hardly anybody who understands the way that his mind works. No two minds are alike, as Horace or some old, or some other old butt said. You said that crazy things happen in dreams. Why do you believe this really happened? I just believe. If I didn't, what kind of a demon worshipper would I be? No, well, this makes sense in a perverted way, I have to admit. Yeah. In my opinion, logical approach lies at the root of most ridiculous and outrageous events in human history. Alright, let's change the subject. Let's trade. Oh, we already traded with them. Okay. Let's ask him some questions. How are things going? Things are going well. Why wouldn't they? I trade all sorts of stuff, useful and less so, with the local thugs. I'm something of a court peddler here. I have a license to operate within the factory. Yashin, a peddler from Otranoe, is green with envy. Let's tell me about this place. As good a place as any. They give me food, they give me shelter. No buggers here to bite my butt. My legs, I mean. I'm free to walk around, look around, and in my time away from trading, I'm free to do whatever I want. Cushy place. At any rate, much better than dying in the wasteland like a stray dog. Are you tired of hauling around this huge backpack? Bagpack. A burden of your own choice is not felt. This is my collection. Look closer. The man sits down and starts extricating various steel trifles, knives, and cartridges from his backpack. If I leave it unattended, they'll nick everything in less than no time. You better keep your eyes open with this folk. Thugs. They'd mug their own mother. Look, whatever you're selling, sell it to me. I'll give it a, I'll give a better price. Now tell me something interesting, please. The man looks at you with a crooked grin. Apparently he likes you, because eventually he shakes the ash off his stick and snorts. Interesting, you say. Uh, one of my, um, colleagues, by the nickname Pazuzu, told me he'd once seen a sketch for a special knife. They say it was designed by an engineer of some e secret organization. He frowns, trying to remember. The thing was called Adam. Its blade was made of a special alloy, and has a special form, and specially designed cullens and patterns. A very intricate design. Although, maybe he was pulling my leg. There's no such organization. But if you do find that sketch, please bring it to me. I'll pay a lot. <laughs> uh, Adam, ha, nothing but empty tails. Can I ask another question? Alright, we'll just leave. So he wants the thing for the knife. I wonder if I attack him. I quick saved. Let's um... I'm gonna try and kill him for his armor. Do I think it's gonna go well? No. Oh, never mind. Alright, yeah. No, they all get to go. <laughs> Son of a gun. Alright, we're gonna die real quick. That's one of his armor. I need to see how to make th thorny armor. So I'm to start saving up for it. So I need metal scrap. I don't know what that second thing is. Rope, and is that soap at the bottom? Doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just not attack him. Alright, let's equip the uh, club anyway that I purchased. Alright, so I need to find scrap metal. I don't know, again, I don't know what the second thing is. It looks like uh, animal fur. I have rope or wire and soap. Alright, let's talk to a few people, see if we can find that stuff. I might head back to Ultra Noye after I talk to this uh, girl over here. So I need, or want, 
all this stuff, so. None of that stuff seems uncommon except for the second item. So I've never seen that. Alright, let's talk to her about her father. Alright, I want to have a word with you. Alright, I have news for you. I've met your father. Well, let's see what she has first. Okay, nothing I want. The girl's eyes go wide with surprise. She looks at you, hope and disbelief mixed in her stare. No way, seriously? Where is he? Is he okay? God. Easy, easy. He was following you and almost found you. Almost. Now he works in the Moonshiner's camp nearby and has no idea his daughter is so close. The girl looks at you bewildered, then almost jumps with joy. Father is in the Moonshiner's camp. That's so close. Oh wow, gosh. How is he? What is he doing? He's fine, and misses you. As I've said, all this time he never for a second abandoned, abandoned hope of finding you. Dunya sighs with relief and carefully wipes off a teardrop. I'm so glad to hear it. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll visit him as soon as we persuade the boss to give Sasha a day off. We'll get back to Dad. We'll see him. I'll be it for a day. Oh, and I know where he is. By the way, what are you going to give me for bringing this information to you? Oh, yes, yes, just a second. You deserve a reward for finding my poor daddy. Sasha, what do we have to offer? The mustache guard shrugs and takes his rucksack off his back. He rummages in it and eventually produces 80 rubles, three cans of stewed meat, and a handful of 12mm bullets. He hands you these treasures. Take it, please. You deserve much more. This is all we can afford right now. Danyemos bows to you as you hurry to... As he hurried to hide the reward. Alright, um. Yeah, hey cutie, how about you drop that zero and get with the hero? Partial success. It wasn't the best possible opening line, but your personality has definitely made an impression on Dunya. The girl looks at you knowingly and wags her finger at you. Alright, easy you, come on. Try acting a bit more discreet, or Sasha will hear you. The girl giggles and lowers her eyes. The mustache guard casts a look full of suspicion in your direction and grips his assault rifle in a more comfortable way, making sure the gesture doesn't escape your notice. Sasha, I'm the, I'm the guy your woman tells you not to worry about. It's okay, Dunya. Can I ask you several questions? No, this is your woman, big guy. Alright, let's go. Um, let's head towards the circus. Well, now let's go to Ultra Noye first. So I talked to the merchant there. Because my next main goal is to get the equipment I need for uh, Thorny Arm. Oh, there's a chance to actually succeed or not. Well, that's not good. I'll probably just save before I do it and then just keep keep trying. But now that I have the club, I think I have a very good chance against the rats at the circus. But I do want to go heal up first and see if I can maybe find some materials for my Thorny Armor. Let's see how long I've been recording. Alright, so it's been half an hour. So I'll probably go to Ultra Noye, and then we'll probably call an episode. Off camera, I'll travel back to the circus. Need to eat. Murderous Doomsday Cult. Um. Let's, let's attack him. I've got a club now, so maybe we can take him. I see two. Or three, sorry. Oh, I forgot to put my helmet on. I need to do that real quick. Um, Alright, that guy's got a gun, so he's gonna be a problem. Alright, one aim shot to the head. Then one regular swing. Alright, let them come to me. I should be the one taking the damage since I have the helmet on. Uh, let's 
instant aim shot. Manute back so we don't get shot. Alright, let's charge him down. Oh, is it shoot me from there? No, he's not. Interesting. Okay, it should be in range to swing at him. Jam. Nope. I only did one damage. I took zero damage. Sucker. Awesome. Zip gun. A tinfoil hat. Okay. Now we definitely need to go get healed up from the dock. Devil's Weed. Fascinating. Okay. I should probably explore Krasno a little more thoroughly and see if there's a doctor there that I can talk to. 112 experience points for that. At least now we can hold our own in fights. No, attack these guys, yeah. Even though we're in the town. Oh, looks like he has good armor. I see one. There's two, three. Alright, I should probably heal up a bit. Do I have... I'm drugged. I don't know what that does. That's fine. Do I have something for uh, plus one endurance? I don't need the intellect for what we're about to do. Let's go. He's got a crossbow. I see a pistol and another pistol. And I'm addicted and drunk. Five damage. Not a big deal. If uh, yeah, if Fidel wants to get up here and help out, that'd be great. That's a six percent chance of that. Let's just uh, twenty-one crit. Awesome. Oh what? Oh, I guess one of these affects my AP count. That sucks. 10 damage, holy crap. Alright, we're probably not going to survive this. These guys are pretty well armed. Fidel, what are you doing? Fidel, I really need you over here. He like ran towards and ran back. Hopefully they run out of ammo. Well, he jammed, so that's that's good. And shot his teammate. Awesome. That's one bandit down. Awesome, they're both jammed. I have another thing I can use. Then run at him. I need to change Fidel's tactics, I think. What are my chances of hitting him in the head or eyes? Alright, no, I'm just gonna swing away. Alright, yeah, now we're in. Uh oh. That's not good. Fidel. Does he never get to go again? God, Fidel's so useless. Okay. Now I'm just upset because, uh. Fidel sucks. Oh, I'm dead. I think we could have done it if Fidel wasn't so useless. 
man. I need to change his tactics. When I get the chance, I want to talk to him. Because I think there's another option to send him to attack whoever, whatever enemies he sees. And somehow I think he was, I think he was bugging out when he was uh, trying to get close to me. No, screw that. I'm going to fight these guys. Man. Alright, we'll fight this. Go get healed up, and then I'll call it an episode. Uh, where are these guys at? I see a rat there. Let's go take out this wasp first. Awesome. Show him what's what, Fidel. Now hang in there, Fidel. Insect down. Fantastic. Awesome. I was really hoping this game was going to have two handed melee weapons. I don't think it's going to, but I was hoping for like a super sledge or something from Fallout. Since it does take a lot of inspiration from Fallout. Also, I want to see if the doctor heals our companions and we use him, because I didn't check that last time. Then off camera, what I'm going to do is probably run around to all the people that live here and see if I can find the materials I need for the armor that I want to craft, and then try and craft it. Start this guy real quick. Nope. Alright, cool. Merchant! Well, Doc, I guess. Actually, hold on. What about Fit Man and Faded Cap? Ant Salivary, salivary Gland. Spider Brain? Oh, I need some of those. I could probably just go and buy these off of them. Oh, I need one of these. Hair's fur. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and sell that. I don't, I don't need that. Um, really, just plus three speechcraft is not very useful. I'll keep the stealth, of course. You won't have any rubles to give me. Um, yeah, whatever. Nicodem. So he's an amateur hunter, he does it full time, walks in the woods and meadows, he kills things to sell. You have food for yourself and valuable merchandise. That's true. Alright, cool. Far in the north, beyond the marsh, another hunter, Nikolai, he's a nice guy, has a respect for literature, even writes poetry. Comes to down to earth business, he's also a wolf expert. I myself only hunt wolves when there's no other game around. Why waste time on them? They're like they're like dogs, you always take away their fangs, that's it. Nikolai has clients in Krasno who need furs and fangs, so he gets them those. He dragged me this venture of, of his once. We went on a wolf hunt together, shot a couple of them, but it took us longer than we thought it would. We had to go back really late at night. The force of this area is really entangled, you see. Alright, so explain. 
In midday, it's twilight heat there because the crones of the trees let the sunlight only through an occasional hole between the leaves and the branches. On the late evening, as it was as it was in our case, it's pitch dark. We had to move pretty much by touch while carrying our load to the glade where we had pitched our tents. When we finally got out of the thicket, I just froze. My god, it was so beautiful there. In the day, it's a regular glade, but in the night, when the star Hesperus has appeared in the sky and is sailing through the thick clouds, pouring its silver light on the earth, it's a totally different picture. The dew in the grass sparkled in the starlight. The water in the spring was like a diamond snake. It murmured and winded round the roots and stones. It all made me stop in my tracks. Suddenly, Nikolai poked me in my side. Now, what did he want? Look, he said. Not the only one charmed by the scenery. I recollected myself. I looked where Nikolai was pointing and saw a silhouette of something lying just a couple meters away from my tent. Its shape resembled that of a wolf, but that wolf was lying on its back with two pairs of its thin legs in the air, while its head bent at some unnatural angle was facing due east. Looking at the sky, at the crones of the trees illuminated with silver light, at the star, motionless, but its fur was all raised, as if it was all aiming upwards. Tell me now, why would an animal want to look upwards? I had no idea. I shouted. The silhouette jumped up and ran into the forest, on all four befitting for a wolf, with its head still raised almost vertically, as if its neck had been rot. Some people may shrug at this and say, maybe it's just a mutation. The wolf was born a freak. But listen to what Nikolai figured. The hunter clears his throat and stretching his arm with path pathos, pronounces with emotion. Years ago by and the ages pass, but living creatures are no dream. They keep on living and surpass the laws that once were true, it seemed. I even learned it by heart. That's how much I liked it. It was a new moon then, and I noticed that on the days when the moon renews, my brain really begins working a hundred times better. That's how it is. Alright, well... I've got another piece of the thing that I need for the, uh, thorny armor. How you feeling? 34 out of 49. Alright, so I can give him Casper mid if I... How'd you get ammunition? What's going on here? Have you had this and you just haven't been using it? Give me that too. You don't get to use that right now. Alright, now I just want to see if the doctor, when he heals me, he heals, uh... Fidel as well. Actually, hold up. Give me one of these log. Give me this log. Um, and in exchange, you can have this brick and that. And I'll take whatever. Alright, cool. So now, he's still injured. Okay. Alright, we're going to call the episode here. Uh, off camera, I'm going to look for the rest of the supplies that I need to make the Thorn Armor. And I'll probably just do that off camera since it's probably going to require reloading since I only have a low chance of succeeding. I'm pretty sure that last item is so It might be nails. Two sets of nails. But anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next episode.